Yes, today is December 3rd. It's the clock down to the end of the year. Uh, let's get into it right now. That's what I always say, and that's what I always do. Let's talk about something interesting. I want to show you something. Every morning I wake up now, I do this all the time anyway, but one of the things I'm doing is I'm looking at the futures, and you will notice, this is very interesting, you will notice that one day you'll see the NASDAQ 100 really, really strong, and then a few days later, you'll see it really, really weak, and you'll see the Dow and the S&P and the Russell strong. It's kind of like the NASDAQ or the other ones. And what, the reason you're seeing that is because anytime you have a news headline that says COVID is spiking or people are getting more fearful, they'll see the, you'll see the NASDAQ go up higher. Uh, excuse me, the other way around. If you see people getting more fearful that there's a COVID, you'll see the NASDAQ come down. And if the other way around, if people are getting more uh, confident that the vaccine is coming out, you'll see the NASDAQ rally and the others go down. So it's kind of like the NASDAQ versus all others. It's one or the other, one or the other. And it's interesting because before this COVID, you would see the NASDAQ up, you would see the Russell up, but now it's kind of like door number one, going back to, re, you know, going back to our lives. Number two, stay at home, lock down, COVID is back. It's really interesting. The markets are really trying to kind of do this right now, day to day. It's really amazing. And that's why I'm looking at the futures every day. So again, if you see the S&P up like one and you see the NASDAQ up 33 and the Dow up like 11, you know what I mean? Or Russell up one and then you see the NASDAQ up 29. That's, that's telling us that one of the two scenarios is taking place. And all we have to do is look at the news to see which one is prevailing. But again, till the vaccine's coming out, you're going to have this one direction or the other direction. Be very, very mindful of that because that's how the market is analyzing the market. Usually the market is not binary. Usually the market has got a lot of gray areas. But right now it's kind of like, is it going to be COVID again or, is it, or are we going to get out of this? Is it going to be COVID or are we going to get out of this? And the best way to see how the market sentiment is before the opening bell based on these two factors is simply look at the futures, which is what I've been doing every morning before I even go into my analysis to see, is it the NASDAQ or is it all others? Is it the NASDAQ or is it all others? And I'm telling you, you can get a really good idea right now. I mean, not right now, the second, but before the vaccine comes out to see if, if it's fear or greed guiding the market, fear or greed, fear or greed. So again, if you see the broad indices move up, that's telling us that the market is looking past COVID. If you see the NASDAQ spike and everything else kind of shrugging down like it is right now, like Russell up 0.30, literally 0.30. This thing is barely has a heartbeat. The Dow is a, is a 30,000, it's up 10, and this is a 12,000, it's up 30. So you could see the difference. So the market is fearful today. It may change, but right now the market is fearful. So again, NASDAQ higher, everything else subdued, the market is fearful. NASDAQ down, everything else rising, that means the market is hopeful. So again, you gotta kinda have to look at the market because like I said a week ago, we're like at a crossroad right now and imagine there's somebody, there's a madman and he's got his finger on the nuclear missiles and then you have the good guy trying to, you know, there's like a countdown and he's trying to save the day. So you've got the COVID, that's the COVID, and that's the vaccine production. So it's kind of like what happens first? Does the, does the world get destroyed or do we get the COVID? It's it's crazy, but I'm telling you, look at this, up 30 or up 34, 30, almost 34, 34, and this is a 0.70 or 1.25. And again, look at the Dow. The Dow is up 13 points. It's a $30,000 asset. This is worth half that, and it's up 29. So there's very little correlation right now between the NASDAQ 100 and all the other indices, the NAS the S and P, the mid cap, um, which is right here, the um, it's it's all in that ballpark. So again, look at look at the broad indices, and then look at the Nasdaq 100. Which one is really leading? And you can get a good feel of the fear versus the greed level. Now, let's talk about global economy in light of that. European sh shares traded lower, U.S. futures weakened Thursday after a day of gains on most Asian markets, progress towards rolling out the vaccine, and talks of reaching a compromise on a new help for U.S. economy has been spurring advances on world markets. So we're hopeful, but we're kind of, you know, looking at it from perspective. As countries to 
prepared to begin vaccinating health control workers and others at high risk against COVID. Hopes are rising that the pandemic will be brought under control. But the question is, is it going to be brought under control in April and May again, or is it going to be brought under control in January and February? Because if it's not, if we don't have a vaccine within the next three weeks, I can promise you, assure you, that the country's going to go through exactly what it went through last this year, except it's going to start, well, it's going to go in 2021 exactly what it went through 2020, except it's going to start a month earlier. The rollout of the vaccine in the U.S. could begin this month if regulators give their approval. Drug makers Pfizer and BioNTech said they want permission for emergency use of their COVID vaccine in Britain, which will be one of the first countries to begin vaccinating. In the U.S., the focus is going to turn to jobs, 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 and more jobs. Economists are forecasting employers will add about 441,000 jobs in November, down from a gain of 638,000. That's bad and negative. We need to have more employee, we need higher, better hiring. We need more hiring. Traders are hoping Democrats and Republicans may reach a deal on some amount of economic stimulus for the economy before 2021, but they remain divided. On Wednesday, federal, federal Chairman Powell and Nutchen said, told lawmakers during a House Final Services Committee that Congress needs to approve relief now, like now. Energy markets, they're going to come out of their meeting today and they're going to discuss whether OPEC is going to bend or not. Um, crude oil is now at $45 a barrel, let's say, which is above the price that U.S. frackers pay for the energy. Now, we had manufacturing data yesterday, and the number was on the high end. That's very, very good so far. We had, that's the PMI, Producers Price Index. We also had the ISM Manufacturing Index, the Institute of Supply Managing. That came out mixed, but consensus was 57.7. We came at 57.5. So it's okay. It's not too bad. We've got jobless claims coming out in about four minutes, and this is what I have a problem with. The problem is we've been around the 700, 800,000 uh, level now for several months. And yeah, yeah, the four-week moving average is about 748,000, but the problem is we've been at this four-week moving average now for a long, long time. Now, if jobless claims remain near 750,000 per week, do you think retail sales is going to pick up? I don't think so. If economy doesn't get stimuli, stimulus check and we have almost a million unemployment claims a week, that is not pretty. That is not pretty. And that's going to fall to retail sales. And that's going to prevent us from having a rally at the end of this year. So again, I need to see this number break 700. I need to see it go down to about 600,000 and lower, lower, lower. And here's the employment situation that I talked about when I did the report a minute ago. And you could see here consensus, non-farm payroll, consensus 200 to 610,000. I mean, we're all over the place. We're literally all over the place. And I'm telling you, unemployment rate is between six and a half and 7%. That's bad, folks. That's bad. That's bad, 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 bad. After like, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, 10 months, and we can't get below 7%. So if, if unemployment stays at these levels for another month, maybe two, we're going to see a big, big impact on retail sales and get, uh, unless the stimulus checks comes in. So again, keep your eye on tomorrow's unemployment report. Keep your eye out on today's number that's coming out in just a few minutes. But that's the range, and I want to see a positive surprise because if the unemployment levels stay at 750, 800,000 every week, that's telling us something very, very strong, that economy is not expanding, that people are struggling. Now, in light of all of this, the markets are not soft. The markets are near all-time highs. And if you're selective, there's a lot of good assets you can make money on. For example, this Ceridian HCM holding, C-Day, ticker symbol C-Day, I like it. Why? Well... Look at the long-term chart. Two years, stock is making all-time highs right now. They're doing something right. The, the stock made an all-time high and a 90-day high. It broke out a 90-day high, and notice we're congesting here. Had a little pullback and made a 10-day low, but closed near the upper end of the range. So if I was trading this stock, I would put a buy stop right around the 90 
485 level to get me in. And I would put a stop loss right at the 50 day moving average. So I would buy at right around, right below 95. And I would put a stop loss right around 90. And I believe the stock will go back to this trading range. I think that it has had much of a sell off. And with the relative strength we're, we're, that we're seeing with the lack of surprises and volatility, there's a good chance it's gonna take out the high. Also, if you look at the profile of the stock, you will see that they provide human capital management software company. And that's very, very, very good for people to manage people who are working from home, which is, it's a prepackaged software, it's in the cloud. Also, this stock is a S&P 400 stock. It's a mid cap stock. What have I been telling you guys for a while now? That mid caps, mid caps and Russell 2000 stocks are undervalued. And the, because the stock is undervalued in terms of the index compared to the S&P 500, they have more upside potential. So again, this is a, um, it's not a tech stock. It's a, it's a cloud stock. It's something that employees need more than anything right now. And I think we're going to see more upside. And again, my suggestion would be to buy around the, the high 94 levels on a buy stop. And if it trades higher, you would get in. And I would put a uh, exit right around the 103, 105 level. I think we're gonna go up there. It's a swing trade. And again, this is a 90-10 pattern. It made a 90-day and an all-time high, and it made a 90-day swing low. The trend is still intact. It doesn't look like we're gonna break the 50-day moving average. And I really, really like this stock. now. Let's check the employment data, shall we? Let's see what if we can get an update. Consensus 755, 800,000. Aha, 712. We're getting better. We're getting better. This is a good number. This is a good number. This is a good number. It's it's a lot better than 750 or 800, but again, we're still above uh, 700,000. I need to see this number break, but this is a step in the right direction. There's only 712,000 new claims instead of 750 or 800,000. So finally, we're starting to go back down. My hope is, my hope is, so yeah, we're down 75,000 from a week ago. And again, four week moving average, 748,000. Hopefully tomorrow's number is also positive, but this is good, this is positive. It's not as good as I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it below 700,000 but this should give market a good little rally. So again, be very cautious. Um, start putting money from stocks to ETFs because stocks are a little overbought right now. I showed you divergence yesterday on the S&P, on the NASDAQ. Momentum levels are overbought. It's time for the market to cool off, but there's still some stocks that I'm liking right now, and I like this C-Day. And again, buying it around high 94s and liquidating it right at the 50-day moving average. I hope that helps. And before you go anywhere, I've got something important for you. You've probably heard of Leonardo DiCap, Di, Di, not Leonardo Di, DiCaprio, Leonardo Da Vinci. All right. I know they're very similar. It's very easy to confuse them. I'm just kidding, right? Come on. I got to have some fun around here. <laughs> He's known as the original Renaissance man. Leonardo was an incredible artist and an inventor as well as a mathematician. In fact, he used powerful mathematic equations to paint some of this most famous artwork. He kind of reminds me of uh, Alan Musk a little bit. Few know this, but you can actually use the Da Vinci ancient equation to identify big price moves before the general market gets wise. That's the key. You wanna identify big price moves before the general market wisens up to it. Knowing about these price swings before they happen can net you massive sums of money. I'm talking about triple digit, even quadruple digit returns, big, big bucks. It all comes down to a special number called the golden ratio. Folks, you've got to learn about the golden ratio and one trader wants to show you how to use it the right way. Folks, I can't wait to see this and I want you in on this. You've got to learn how to use the golden ratio. It applies to everything in life. I'm not kidding. It applies to markets, math, art, uh, face symmetry, everything, flowers. Uh, these ratios are are God-given numbers. I'm not kidding. The golden ratio is, it's a natural phenomena. You want to get in on it. You want to check it out. Click on the link below to learn how you could take advantage of trades that give you triple digit, quadruple digit gains that rely on really cool ratios. And again, not Leonardo DiCaprio, but Leonardo Da Vinci.
<laughs> Don't confuse the two. Big, big difference. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. And give me some feedback. I need feedback. Bye, guys. Take care.